All right, everyone. I'm joined here today by the one, the only Adam Fugit, new MMA fighter, new UFC fighter, I should say, eight and three in MMA, and uh, has a fight coming up in not this weekend, but next weekend, February 4th. First fight on the main card. That's right. So, Adam, tell me a little bit about your love for the Trailblazers. Oh, man, they're our only professional team. Um, so, I got to throw some support. And um, I've been following the Blazers, shoot, way back when we had Brandon Roy and, and Marcus Aldridge. I watched this draft, uh, Damian Lillard, who is by far probably one of my favorite all-time basketball players. The dude's, you know, his commitment to the – to the the grind as he would say is is just you know it's very inspiring um and just watching what you know he does in and um does it day in and day out on a nightly basis and you know um i just really appreciate him as a as an athlete as a as to kind of a role model for oregon he dropped 60 the other night right dame he did yeah yeah i he know they've had a big game the other night he's been bowling one out of the most of one of the most efficient 60 point games there's been in the the NBA so the dude's doing it on all levels I mean man. he's up there on a bunch of different stats I mean playoff records he has a bunch of different it really I mean it, it is a shame that you guys haven't been able to win that championship but I really hope you guys do like win that championship for Dame because he really does deserve oh. one he's great I agree man I, I hope they get it done for sure I, I root for him every year I'm a diehard blazer fan so you know um his loyalty I I, I want to I see it be rewarded. I want to see him get that that chip. So yeah, I think we all do. So tell me a little bit more about your boxer, the dog. Um, it's you're posting <laughs> that dog everywhere. So tell me a little bit more about it. Uh my uh, my big uh, my big boxer Ox. His name is yeah. Ox. He's uh eight now. I actually just had to take him to uh the vet to get a bunch of uh, fatty like cysts removed and stuff. So. He kind of got himself a little cleanup, um, okay. and he's uh, finally kind of off the painkillers, I guess you'd say, or the antibiotics. And uh, it's it's great to see him. Uh, he's a lot more lively, you know. Yeah. Some, I think some of those little things were messing with him. So okay. his uh, his youth has come back out, but of course, you know, he can't be doing too much right now because okay. of uh, some of the stitches that he's got. So, um, but yeah, man, he's a uh, he's my child. He's my fur child. Um, Without him, I, I don't know, man. Life would be a little bit darker for sure. Yeah. No, I have my eight-year-old Rocco, so I'm definitely right there on the same page as you with my dog. My dog is a uh, it's a mutt, though. He doesn't have no beautiful mix to him. So what I, was <laughs> I reading, mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I mean, I got him from uh, the shelter, and they told me that he was boxer, and I've had him, I've had boxers all my life. Uh, he's definitely too big to have just <laughs> full blown boxer in him. Um, the more that I look at him, it's kind of funny. The more I look at him, the more I see, uh, you know, remember the dog Beethoven? I think it was a St. Yes. Bernard. Yes, of course. In, yes. Uh, he's kind of got that kind of look to him, like as far as like prints and stuff and okay. then how big he is. I'm like, oh, man, he's got to have a little bit of like St. Bernard or something. In something him. else in him. Yeah, he's, he's, not a, he's a pure boxer. Yeah. 85 pound lap dog, man. He, <laughs> he likes to sleep on me all the time. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So when I was researching for your interview, I was obviously going through your socials and I probably came to the conclusion that you are the best nephew. You are the best uncle ever. Your nephews must love you. Tell me a little bit more about, you know, your nephews and your love for them and just family in general. So I got two nephews and a niece now. Uh, oh, you do? She, you, uh, have, you have a niece now? Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, I got a niece now. And, uh, you know, she might be the, the most wild one out of all of them. We'll, we'll, we'll see. The, the younger uh, the younger nephew is definitely kind of a spitting image of his, his uncle. Or the oldest nephew has got, you know, a little bit more like his dad. Um, I think that he'll be pretty good in, like, um, uh, competitive team sports. I think he'll probably be good in. Okay. Whereas the, the, the younger one, I think he'll probably gravitate to – you know the individual sport like his uncle did he's got a lot of energy but uh <laughs> in fact it was kind of funny the the youngest one when he was like i don't know i want to say he was no older than three months he went to my very first my amateur debut for <laughs> mma 
<laughs> we got pictures of him with these little noise cans. Yeah, the noise cans and, yeah. Big yeah. and so, uh, you know, for as long as he, right. you know, he's been alive necessarily, he's uh, he's known what Uncle A does. And and uh, the younger brother, though, the younger nephew, he uh, he had no idea up until the Solomon Renfro fight. Okay. Um, no clue. He was, we were up in the we we're in the living room up in the living room and he was asking me he's like hey uncle a who would win spider-man or the white power ranger and i'm like shoot that's that's a tough one man that's that's tough i was like but hey who would win uncle a or the blue power ranger and he looked at me like bitch please <laughs> and i was like i just started laughing i, I was like uh <laughs> I told the older one, I was at Weston, I was like, tell tell your little brother, tell Dubado, which is his nickname. I was like, tell Dubado what Uncle A does. And he like looks over at me and smiles and goes, Uncle A fights people. <laughs> <laughs> That's so and I was like, oh. And was, uh, so he so didn't fun. believe me. You know? Oh no, it was hilarious. He didn't believe me, so I had to I had to show him a video and he Got all wide eyed, ran down the stairs and yelled at his mom, like, Uncle Ray, punch this guy in the face. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, cool. it was great. That's great. It must be nice having like, you know, like two little guys next to you always supporting you. That's great. And now the niece too. Is it oh yeah. Your, is it your brother's or sister's children? Is it your it's my sis it's my sister's children. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so you just have this crazy loyalty to family, to your gym, and just in general, loyalty is a big part of your life. Tell me how that kind of were you born with that? Were you raised that way? Just tell me kind of how loyalty became such a big part of who you are. Yeah, that's just family values. Um, shoot, I mean, I have a, I have a pretty big family, and you know, um, I was just raised on that. Um those family values and um we've done all you know my my family's done a lot together in fact like there's multiple times throughout the year everybody gets together not talking just like my mom and my dad and my sister and me but like because we get together most Sundays and have family dinner and I guess see my nephews and my niece and um but like as far as like grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins I have shoot i think it's like 16 cousins um we're all pretty tight um we all lived in the same area um went to the same schools so it was just just kind of you know how what we were raised you know, we are you? always doing uh i'm not big into that stuff uh so i'm kind of just you know <laughs> uh yeah i'm not 100 percent sure i don't even want to say <laughs> gotcha gotcha sorry but um, all right, yeah. I was oh, you're good. Because I have a big Italian family, and we're like very similar with the way we are. We have like all the cousins, and we have like all the, the yeah. family, and like the. So I was just wondering if you were if you had that Italian blood as well, because you have those kind of like similar traditions in a way. But those are probably I mean, probably a couple of different. If cultures. we if if I don't have Italian uh, heritage, then uh, we definitely stole the, some of that Italian value, you know, because we keep it all together, and you know, it's you know, I love it, you know. You, I love having all my family around me and and watching me and and trying to be a motivating factor for them and you know vice versa they're they're a support system for me. So do they always come out to your fights? Like every fight they've been like like because you said your your older nephew was at your first fight, your very first amateur fight. So he has has he been to yeah. all your pro fights? Uh no. Oh, we kind of had to, we kind of had to back him off of watching them. He was getting a, you know, little gotcha. kid sees you yeah. throwing hands, and they start mm -hmm. thinking that's how I like to, that's what I want to do too. And so, um, you know, we we give them doses here and there. They're getting gotcha. to an age where they understand, like, you don't just get a fall off and hit somebody. But um, a lot of my family try to to make it out to my events and 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 be there as a support system. And if they're not they're able to make it, they're always, you know in the buildup, you know, reaching out to me and, and giving me positive energy and positive vibes. Good. It seems like that support system really does help. 100%. I don't, I, I don't think I'd be the same without it. You said that you watched the contender series. 
So I was wondering mm-hmm. if you watch the contender series, I mean, you're probably a big fan of MMA and UFC. You watch a lot of the fights. How often do you watch fights? And do you just watch fights in your own weight class? Or are you just, you know, fan of MMA in general? Um, I've been just a fan in general. Um, and I'll, but I'll go in spurts as to how often um, I'm like watching fights. Um, when I get in the camp, I do a lot of film study on my opponents and stuff. Um, when I'm out of camp, you know, we'll we'll buy a pay per view and 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 watch, you know, some of our our favorite fighters, you know, um, anywhere from Kamar Usman to Valentina, Valentina Shevchenko and you know um, Alexander Volkanovsky, all those guys, you know, yeah. we'll buy the pay per views to watch and stuff. Um, but um, yeah, like I guess I kind of go in spurts. It's what I do almost all day. So sometimes coming home and throwing on, you know, you get right now I'm watching sometimes. The Last of Us. Some, some trying to throw on, yeah, you got to take a mental break. You know, as much as a physical break is necessary, some separate it. No, definitely, it definitely makes sense. You have to have that separation from you know life and work in a way. And when your work is also a hobby that you enjoy, you have to separate your life from that hobby sometimes too. It really, really definitely does become a little conflicting when it's like that. But I mean, it seems like you really do. And you, you, and you do what you enjoy, you do what you love. So it really does seem like you are happy and content. So you kind That's of, right, man. You kind of walked me into this. So you said you like watching Kamaru Usman. How was, how was watching that knockout? <laughs> Oh man, you know, it's hard because he did everything right for, you know, four and a half rounds, probably four and three quarters. 24 minutes. You know, I mean. um, yeah. yeah, he did everything right for 24 minutes. And that, and that's the, the, the crazy, beautiful thing about our sport is if there's 25 minutes, you got to be in there engaged on your best you know, uh, basically at the top of your game for 25 minutes straight. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, bad things can happen to you, you know? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, on the other side of that is if you're the guy that's lost for 24 and a half minutes straight, if you can keep that mental toughness, if you, you know, I mean, I'm sure everybody's heard it. Leon's corner was asking him, pleading with him, we got to go, we got to go. And, you know, um, the commentators at the time were talking about that's a, that guy's broken. You yeah, know, he's, he's, he's out there. He's done. He doesn't want to be there no more. He's, you know, and uh, he resigned to losing a decision for him to pull that out. Like he just ex- exactly, you know, um, he, he basically put all things aside and said, forget it. I got nothing else to lose. Um, I'm, I'm going to go out, you know, the way I want to go out and, he put it all together, you know, and it ended up pulling it out instead of getting knocked out, you know. So that's a, a beautiful thing, I think, you know. Um, it yeah, was. you can't it take was. any man or woman lightly when they're when you're in the octagon. Hell no, hell no. What do you think happens in a rematch? Do you think <laughs> Usman gets it done? Uh, you know, I, I said this in one of the last podcasts I did, like. How do you really know about yourself if you've never experienced the loss as a fighter? You mm-hmm. know, how do you know what what you can come back from? And Kamara's done a lot of wrestling, so he's experienced you know defeats for sure. So I think he knows a little bit about it. Um, but uh, I think we're going to see just the best version of Kamara Usman that we ever have seen. You know, um, and in hindsight, I think we're going to see the best Leon Edwards that we're going to see. I, He's got the confidence now. He's got to know that he can, you know, put a you finish put, in there. Put even if he's been for, yeah, you know. So he's got to have that confidence. So I almost anticipate fight of the year for that one, you know. Um, that's what I think. But I think we're going to see the best version of both guys, to be honest. I like that. I like that a lot. So – do you think the respect of the crowd is something you need to earn in the UFC the same way you needed to earn it over at X1? Because I remember how you said when you fought in X1, you really didn't have the respect of the crowd. You know, they were against you and all that. So tell me, do you think you need to earn that respect from the crowd of the UFC? You did a great job in your first fight. 
yeah, you know, um, being that we kind of fight all over the place, you know, um, I always kind of feel that need to go in there and prove myself to show the crowd, like, hey, I'm here to put on a good show. And, you know, I don't know when that'll change. Uh, is, is popularity in the sport going to bring that? Like, oh, I'm accomplished or whatever. I don't have to I already have fans cheering my name. Am I going to, you know, who knows? I, that's just my style, you know. Um, I go in there looking for finishes, you know. And, oh, yeah. and that's what I want to bring to the table each time. Um, I don't want to be, you know, searching for the decision, you know, the, the decision on the cards. Cause we can see how that's affected some fights here recently with, uh, uh, gosh, why his first name's Jared Gordon, and Gordon Patty versus, yeah, you know, um, and I went back and watched this one time and time again, and I'm, I can say I'm fine with the decision. Um, a hundred percent fine with it. I like Peter Yan as a fighter much more than I like um, Al O'Malley, even though, and, and that's no disrespect because I O'Malley's got a really good game. Yeah, and he and he and he and he runs his game plan to a T. He does. Um, in certain terms of just styles, I like I like Peter Yan's. You know, that's how I like yeah. to fight. You know, um, and I, at first I was like, man, what the heck, highway robbery, um, and I wouldn't. It probably a dozen times and i guess okay with it if that fight would have been i went to peter yon i would have been okay with it and the fact that it went to O'Malley, like i said at first as a fan i was a little upset but as a student of the sport and somebody that's you know what you know that Connolly is constantly studying i'm okay with it i'm okay with them giving that fight to O'Malley. I think that he earned that that right to get that decision, you know. Um, and just taking all emotions out of it, you know, for sure. He 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 won that one. That's what happens when you let it go to the cards, man. I mean, I think a clear like you know, because like what you just said, how O'Malley in the end could have kind of gone either way. It was one of those fights, right? At first, I felt the same way. It wasn't. Like, yeah. I thought I thought Yan won, and I thought it was pretty clear. Rewatching it, I did feel that it probably could have gone either way. But even if it, even if I thought Yan still won, the comparison from that fight to Gordon and Pimblet completely wiped away any questions you had about that fight. It, it just, it just the the, sh the shift, the focus shifted over, just yes. to the Patty decision. I've had four interviews yep. this week. All four interviews, the Patty decision has been brought up, and I was not the one to bring it up. So I just want to uh, say that, like, a lot of fighters, a lot of fighters are yeah. are pissed off about this. I mean, I talked to Damon Jackson and Mike Davis. Both of them were pretty pissed off with that decision. They thought it was pretty egregious. You, you didn't like that decision. I mean, even even some media members I know that weren't thrilled with that one. I mean, that was a – it was an interesting decision, to say the least. It was. Because I, I just – you watch that fight, and there's not much to score for Patty. So I'm just not sure where you – get the two rounds there for him but yeah the game can't let it go to the scorecards yep, like no you, you, you can't let it go to the scorecards and you know um i just yeah there's there, there's really nothing else i can say after, after that i you know there, you don't let it go to the sto scorecards um and you got to leave it out there on the mat you know um you can't try you can't rely on somebody to make the decision for you. So you said that even though you you had the loss and everything, you were still happy with the performance you put on in that fight with, against Morales. I think I mean, you made the fans happy, you made I mean, I kind of knew a little bit who you were because I knew who Solomon Renfro was. So when you knocked him out, I was aware of who you were coming into the UFC, but I mean, you put on a great fight. I wasn't. I, 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 I knew you could put on a good fight. I wasn't expecting that. You, you earned a huge fan in me. I'm a huge fan after that fight, and I just wanted I to say, it. just wanted to say, like, did he surprise you with anything? Like, how much did you know about Morales going into that fight? Because you obviously took it on short notice. So, yeah, I knew about nine days notice worth of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we film, you know, we watched film as much as we could in nine days. Um. I put together a game plan, you know, with my team here in Eugene on nine days, you know, as best we could. 
we said here basically okay here's what we're good at here's some things we've sought we, we, we kind of pinpointed even though it's like i mean it's like finding a needle in a haystack as at, you know on nine days notice oh yeah here's some things we see we're gonna try to make this work you know and uh you know I, I felt like if I have a full fight camp that I can, I can get a W in that one. I can, I can pull that one out. You know, I'm still kicking myself for um, being too impatient and trying to pass his guard and uh, getting, you know, basically swept back up to our feet. I, that was my opportunity, you know, um, in that one. And then just a miscommunication going from the second into the third on how we wanted to approach that third round. Um, I was a little too committal and overextended and a guy like him, you know, a guy in the UFC, I, I anticipate all this, you know, as yeah. anybody in the UFC, they should have these skills to be able to put another opponent away, you know, if given the opportunity and yeah. I messed up and I gave him the opportunity for sure. You know, well, um, I mean, I just said, I don't, don't want to put it in. The... Some guys don't have that yeah. finishing, like that killer instinct in them. They really don't. I mean, I know you like you should like that high level guy, but some I mean, there you look, you watch some guys fight, and they really don't have that. Oh, I if, if I have the chance, I'm finishing this fight mentality. You can see that you really do, and Morales is kind of the same. Where if he if he has the opportunity, he's going to go in for it. So, for yeah. sure, for sure, and I and and I might be a hypocrite because I'm saying, uh, you know, don't take it, don't let it go to the judges' scorecards and all this other stuff. But what would have happened if I would have let it go to the scorecards? You know, um. I don't I'm not saying that I had that third round one, obviously, because it finished the way it finished. But, uh, you know, I, I feel like I definitely had one round. You, you did. Know, I'm not you sure. I, you know, um, so nine days notice, maybe I should have been a little bit more reserved, but that's just not my style. Um, I want to I want to get in there and and try to find my way to a finish and work my way to a finish. And, you know, I mean, obviously, the UFC agrees throughout with my career is. You have a main card spot. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, surprise, surprise. I woke up to that. I got a text message. Did you realize you got bumped to the main card? No, I didn't. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about that. I mean, yeah, not, not no, no offense. You're your own one in <laughs> UFC. You took your first yeah. fight on short notice. I mean, you, you accept your next fight and you get a call. You get a call and you're like, hey, you're bumped to the main card. It's like, what? Like that, you definitely, yeah. <laughs> you definitely weren't expecting that. So, just tell me a little bit about the surprise, the the expectation. Do you feel like you have like a little bit more of an expectation to perform now that you are on the main card, or is it the same same business as usual? Not to be cliche, but it's just it's it's kind of business as as usual. You know, um, I'm gonna keep in that mindset. You know, that's where I work best from. Um, I've already, you know. I'm my own biggest critic and I've always put the most pressure on myself. And, um, so I already have that, you know, what good is it to, to worry about these things that are obviously out, outside of my control? I mean, I had no control about getting bumped up, so no. I'm just going to take it as a, uh, you know, I'm just going to take it, say thank you and go in there and do what I'm you know supposed to do. What I've been game planning to do this whole camp. Yes, sir. I mean, Hey, like I said, the UFC obviously does agree that you are someone they can market in some kind of way or has or has fun fights because a main card spot is no joke. I mean, simple as that. For sure. How does, it, I, how, how does it feel fighting on a card with someone like Derek Lewis? That's the second card I'm going to be on with Derek Lewis. Oh, uh, he was in Dallas, you know, okay. um, and, you know, as soon as I – as soon as I saw him, I'm like, you know what? If I get, you know, when I get the W and I get the mic in my hand, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, yell out to Mr. Lewis and tell him I need some help finding a barbecue place here in Austin. So, um, <laughs> I, would have, uh, I would have loved to have heard that. That would have been great. You know, I challenge you to a, some a rib eating contest rib or off. something. <laughs> yeah, rib off. There you what go. Kind of, uh, what kind of food <laughs> do you like? Do you have like a favorite food or something or no? Oh man, it's more like what food don't I I, I like, you know? Um Same but way. yeah, I, you know, barbecue is is awesome. Um my dad is, you know, him and my brother-in-law are are are, are grillers, you know, they 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 they're master grillers, so I 
I mean, self-proclaimed, I'll say that. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I love barbecue food. Um, realistically, you know, I, I'm not that picky. Um, I, I should be on the, the vegetables and the greens a little bit more, but, you know, who doesn't like themselves a, a, a nice chunk of, of steak or some, you know, some ribs, some barbecue ribs or a couple of barbecue burgers off of the, uh, the Blackstone grill. How much, uh, how much weight do you cut? Um, if you so want it, if you want to answer that. Pro- you don't have to. Oh, answer that's that. fine. Not, it, it's just kind of like one of those, um, it's, it's one of those questions that's, so like I diet down, like I blew up to 210 and I've been dieting down. I'm around like 188 right now. Okay. Um, Come the weight cut day, I'll probably be down around like 77 or 76. Got it. Got it. So then you cut. So, so you only cut like what, five, six pounds? Like six pounds of water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Not bad at all. Um. So how is training with world champions like Lucas Barboza and Brent Prime has been like? I actually um got the chance to talk to Brett a little bit on DM, didn't get the chance to interview him or anything, but he had posted what happened with the Bellator tournament and I had slid up and we were talking a bit and we were talking just about how he was frustrated with that whole situation. But just tell me how it is training with, sure. world, with world champions. I mean, two great former Oh, man, it's, it's freaking humbling. That's for sure. You know, um, I'm a big believer about taking your L's in the gym, you know? And so when you have two guys like that attacking you and at times you're the, you're, you're the, you're the minnow in the shark tank, you know, when you have two guys rotating on you, um, yeah. you're not going to win around. You're not going to, you're going to be in survival mode, you know, yeah. Trying whichever way just to, to make it to the buzzer, you know? So um, it's been great having both those guys in, in the camp and, and working with them, you know, um, I can feel my game, not only um, being tested. And, and so, yeah, I, I can't thank them enough. You know, um, they're, they're definitely, you know, my brothers and I, I wish Lucas the, the best, you know, he's, he's fighting tonight and uh, mm-hmm. I expect him to go in there and, and to get this guy and put him away on the ground, man. EFL Challenger Series, baby. No joke. He, he could That's be right. in this next season. So, I know. Yeah. I know. I'm, I got my eye on him. I got my eye on him. Nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> any update on a trip to Thailand? I know you talked about possibly going soon. Is there any update on that? Obviously, it would have been nice if um, you had the event in South Korea like it was planned. You would have been a little bit closer. But, you know. Um. And actually, you know, I've been talking to Lucas about it. He mentioned going. Um, and so he's kind of helping facilitate that trip over there. Um, and I think we're looking at like March, maybe. Nice. So um, after his fight, you know, and after my fight, we'll we'll go grab a burger and some fries or something. And uh, we'll, we'll put that those plans to paper. You know, I know that he's actually doing some seminars in Europe this uh it sounds like this spring and summer so okay. i'm definitely gonna see if i can uh join in any of that traveling if he's if he needs like an uki or whatever so nice nice yeah that's cool do, do you uh what's it you've never been to thailand you said right no i haven't not at all yeah uh, is there any place you do like to travel to specifically or not um i've traveled to mexico quite a bit Okay. Um, Cancun, Playa del Carmen. Okay. Um, you know, I've been down there for some nice. sunshine. Some, nice. you know, since we don't get a lot up here and we get a lot more rain, you know, got to go down and get the, the vitamin D in Mexico and, but that's m- more just like, I don't know, for rest and recovery. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thailand would be a little bit more of like a, a, a fight vacation, I guess yeah. you could, you know, yeah get a train with some of the, the, the best strikers in the world, you know, and that would be just amazing. Yeah, no, I mean, I bet it would be. I, uh, I, was, I was talking to Mike Davis about how he went and trained at Tiger Muay Thai down in Thailand. And he was telling me about like some crazy stories down there and stuff, how, you know, there was this one guy that came in and they were like, oh, don't hit him hard. And it was like, what? 
So then he spars with him and the guy throws a crazy head kick at him. He's like, what? Like, I'm hitting you as hard as I want. Like, and then uh, he told me about <laughs> how Raphael Fazeev was paying people to drop someone with body shots or something like that. Like, it's fun, funny, funny shit sounds like it goes down over there. So it sounds like a really fun time. It really does. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I haven't heard some of those stories, so I definitely no. have to definitely have, have my to head on a swivel. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you said that you watch a decent amount of tape. How how much tape mm-hmm. have you watched on your upcoming opponent, and what things have you seen that you, that you looked at, at and you're like, I'm better than him, I can beat him in these areas? Or is it everything? Can you beat him everywhere? Ah. Uh. <laughs> Um, you know, he's, uh, he's got that, that Kempo style. He likes to be in and out quite a bit. He's got a lot of trust in his left hand. Um, but that being said, you know, kind of going back to the Solomon fight, it's going to be my space and we're going to, you know, I'm going to do my damnedest to make sure we're operating at my pace, you know? So, um, keeping him out there. Um, and then when he gets too close, you know, you, you better be careful because I'm just as comfortable going to the ground as I am standing on my feet. I really try to embrace that, that mixed martial artist. And, you know, I, you know, I've said on some other podcasts, I, I, I want the KO. I'm looking for the KO, but realistically, I'm just looking for the finish wherever I can get it. I'm going to take it, you know, and um, being a, being an all around fighter, you know, like myself and, um, I just I feel like the ball's kind of in my court wherever he wants to go. I I got a leg up, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's where I kind of feel. Nice. All right. Have you been able to watch a lot of film on him? Have you been able to find his fights? I know it sometimes gets hard. With, There's like, not a lot, right? Yeah. There's not a lot. So I've I've watched his risen fights. Okay. Um, and I've watched his contender series fight mm-hmm. fights or his, his one fight on the contender yeah. series. Okay. And with that that fight in the contender series, you know, he had some trouble with that guy's range, you know, being longer and lengthier. He had some trouble there. So um, it'll be interesting to see, you know. So it you took got... him three rounds to get that finished. Yeah, no, it did take him. It took him, took him a bit to get that finished. But you had three different titles and three different promotions, right? It was yeah. pure, co- pure Combat, X1, and – oh, God, no, I forgot the other one. Give me a sec. Pure combat. It was prime. Prime fighting. Yep. Prime fighting. Yeah, prime fighting. Yeah. So you, you had the three titles and three different promotions, and you were what? Like, I want to say you were less than 10 fights into your career at that point, probably less than like eight fights into your career. Just tell, yeah. me, tell me about that. Tell me going from bouncing around from all these regional promotions and just, hey, I'm going to beat your champion. Hey, I'm going to beat your champion. Hey, I'm going to beat your Just tell me about that. I mean, that's kind of funny. I mean, that's just kind of the regional game, right? All these new promotions will pop up. Um, it seems like every couple of years, one goes under and not the same owners pop up on it and make a new one, you know? So that's just kind of how the regional game goes. Um, when, when I first got into it, the, the first promotion I fought for was prime and they were talking about making me their champ and, you know, showering me with all this spotlight. And we want to give you a, a four fight contract with a, an opt out. If the UFC comes talking to you and, and it's all it's all chit chat. It's all it's all a bunch of you know, butter you up, make you yeah. feel good kind of stuff. And you know you're fighting for like twelve hundred to show and twelve hundred to or, win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't even think. I think my first fight was seven fifty, seven fifty. You know. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't even really go up from there. You know, it kind of it kind of fizzles around the same area. So, yeah. you know, if you get into this sport and you're not trying to push it to to the top level, you know, um, then you should definitely take a step back, ask yourself, what are you doing it for? Then, you know, um, and if it's just because you want to go out to the bars after the fights and get people buying you beers, hey, I'm glad that makes you happy, but. <laughs> Me, myself, man, like, I want to try to fight the best guys in the world. And, and I also want to, you know, I want to get in there and prove to myself that I can uh, beat those guys. And then I also want to get the appreciation from the company with a, with a nice paycheck. So, oh, yeah, oh, yeah of course. <laughs> you so know? do you feel the smaller cage of the Apex gives you an advantage? I know that's not something you 
were thinking about when you accepted the fight because it wasn't even supposed to be in the U.S. Yeah. Let alone the Apex. But now that it's switched, do you think that smaller cage gives you an advantage? Because I know you have that great wrestling base. Ah, again, I think it's it's not. It's, I don't know. It's another one of those things I don't put a lot of stock in. I'm a mixed martial artist. I gotta, I gotta go in there and do my job. Um, the job hasn't changed. It's still the same. Uh, we got a little um, smaller quarters to work in, so it's gonna be even more um, important that I keep my space and work at my pace. You know. Um, yeah. So I'm just that, that's kind of what I take into account. You know. All right. Um. And and the same for him, you know, he's he he can't get too overzealous and just walk his way in. Otherwise, he's gonna get tied up, you know. And it's gonna either be Muay Thai clinch or wrestling, you know. And then yeah. we'll, we'll find our way to the ground somehow. Okay, sounds good. So let me just ask you about some upcoming welterweight fights. Just some predictions for that, and then we're done. Uh, for sure, Jeff Neal and Shavkat. What do you think happens in that one? Ooh, Jeff Neal, man, he's. It's kind of, I feel like he's been underrated, man. Hell yeah. I he feel has. like, hell yeah, he has. I, I don't feel like he's gotten the attention that he needs. I like Jeff Neal's style. I, I love when he freaking went in there and uh, head kicked platinum Mike Perry. That was, was it a head kick or a left cross? No, it was a I head kick. It was a, it head, was a kick. head kick. Maybe it, yeah. It, it was both. It was yeah, both. He uh, head kicked him, rocked him, and then finished him with punches. Yeah. It, that it was, went down as like know, a head kick I'm, and punches. I'm, and I was sitting there watching that fight, and people were asking me, "How would I fight? How would I, how would I go about that fight?" And I just remember saying, "Yeah, I would. I would go out there. I'd I'd spam that high kick to occupy that right hand a little bit of Mike Perry's, and then I'd try to put my straight left hand on him, you know. And and that's what he did. And I'm like, "Oh man, that's. I mean, I love it. I love it. You know, minds are yeah, are man. clicking over here." Yeah, no, Jeff Neal is great. He's definitely one of my favorites in the game right now. His style is just so fun to watch. And then he just he went out there and walked through Luke. That was that was crazy. I was like, oh God. So he definitely showed he's here to stay. And then Shavkot, Shavkot's great, but I think he might be might be a little overhyped at this point. He's great. He he's shown a ridiculous skill in the UFC, but I just I've seen people say that he'd be the betting favorite right now in a fight against Leon. I was like, come on, like, let's let's slow the roll a little bit here. We got to see him beat some other guys first. I think Shavkat's great, but I think it's a little too soon to make these predictions. Yeah, the hype train gets going a little quick these days, I feel like. And, Definitely. You know, so people keep asking me about call outs and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I don't think I'm at that level yet. You know, give me a couple of W's and then we'll start talking about that. So how do you feel about the kind of like stagnantness of the top of the division right now? You have. Hamzat, who's kind of just, I'm not sure what's going on with him. You have Colby, who hasn't fought in a bit. You have Bilal, who wants to fight both of them. You have Gilbert, who's now trying to fight Bilal. And there's a whole situation going on, but there's really not too much happening at the top of this weight class. Tell me your thoughts on just what's happening now. You know, it's, I um, feel like it's a, a weird, like, type of posturing by, almost all the, the top tier guys of I'm going to play this weight and get my title shot. They all feel um, entitled to the next title shot. And I just don't think it's as clear cut as, you know, they want to believe, but every fight you take at that point is a risk, you know, a risk that you either lose or the risk that you get injured. And, you know, um, that's just kind of the name of the game, but um For me, like, yeah, Gilbert lost to Hamzat. Another fight I think you could look at is, uh, I think that one was a, you know, I'm not sure I'm fully down with that decision that Hamzat, you know, won, you know, I'm okay with it, but it was a lot closer than I think we give it credit for. You know, Hamzat came out fast, you know. Um, does Hamzat deserve a shot? The, the fact that he missed missed weight, you know, um, that that comes into consideration too. Um, Bilal, you know, another one of those, I feel like constantly underrated guys. Um, I like that he's hunting a fight against Colby or uh, or uh, Hamzat. Like that's you know definitely going to make a rise on his arm. But I think that if him and 
Burns got together and fought, I think the winner of that right there rightfully deserves the title shot. I would say so too. I mean, Hamza and Colby are sitting up there at the top and I, I love I love me some Hamza, don't get me wrong, but that one win over Gilbert probably isn't enough yet. He probably needs something else. That Holland win really isn't it's not considered much in terms of title contention. Not right. He he screwed himself over because he could have got the Nate Diaz fight, and then you could have argued he had the name, he had the this, he had the that, but yeah. he didn't. So that Holland win kind of pushed him back in a sense, and now he doesn't have a clear title shot. Bilal doesn't have a clear title shot. Gilbert doesn't. Colby doesn't. I mean, that entire top of that weight class has no clear title shot. And Usman and Leon are fighting for the third time. Whoever wins, they're not fighting again. So right. th- this division needs to figure itself out so that the when Leon and Usman happens in March, we have someone that's there ready to fight. Because yeah. we just we just had Leon and Usman fight twice, and you're telling me the division couldn't figure itself out in that time? Like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be an interesting position that the the UFC's in um, when it comes time to make that decision. And uh, you know, my prediction is if it sits stays standing where it's at now, it's gonna be Palms up versus the winner. Yeah. Um, Colby had and who was Colby's last fight against? Was Forehead it, uh, a year ago. A year ago. So it was Jorge a year ago, and we haven't heard any news from him since. Jorge said he's looking to come back. He tweeted out yesterday that he's um has something in the works or something like that. So well, he's on like a two three. loss skid, right? Three, three. two to Usman yeah, and then one to Colby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, maybe he could come in and shake it up a little bit. Maybe he's enticing enough for uh, Hamzat to fight. You know. Maybe. Um, I don't see them remaking the fight with Colby and him. No, not after see that happen. Not after he put sucker punched Colby in, on the street like a month yeah. after their fight. No, they're not going to do that. You know, so I don't see that happening. Maybe he, maybe him coming back entices Hams enough. Um, but yeah, if it just stays the way it is, I, I see him giving it to Hams Um, even though you know he's had some of his own issues. Um, but I can see that popularity's there. Um, you know, the fans love him, they hate him. That's there, but uh I don't know. I, I feel feel bad for Muhammad and, and and Burns, you know, they both have been active, they've both climbed to that certain point, and they don't really have anywhere else to go besides the title when they're trying to make it clear cut, you know. Muhammad is by trying to call it Hamzat or uh Covington, but I I'm not sure when we see Covington fighting again i haven't even heard of him being back in the gym or not i haven't either i haven't you know? heard of thing with colby so i really couldn't even oh. tell you about anything when it comes to that but uh, it's looking like gilbert and Bilal have been going back and forth about fighting each other so hopefully that does go down and gives the division something to look forward to because i mean obviously you know you have leon usman but once that's over then what that, that's that's yeah. the point this division's at right now it's just they're they're screwed so, all right, Adam, That would that's it. I appreciate everything. Have a great day, and um, I hope you enjoyed talking with me. I did, man. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm, I'm glad you. that we got this done. Thank you. Have a great one.